Singapore, Southeast Asia's economic powerhouse. Per capita GDP here has risen over a hundredfold in the last 40 years, but the island state's birth rate has fallen to an all-time low. The average family size in Singapore has shrunk over the years, from three to four kids in the 1970s to just one or two kids now. Each child is now so precious. That sets the stage for a different type of parenting. A type of parenting where I think parents you know, believe that it is their responsibility to ensure that they will give the child the very best. So then the very best is the question, what, what does it mean, right? This is Carice Ko. She's her mummy's little princess. I am a big girl already. I'm five years old already. I dream of prin princess today. She's very ladylike. I believe she take after me. Tai ha pony dear is it? But must be the zigzag one. Elaine was adamant about getting her daughter into the creme de la creme of preschools. Hey, say bye bye to Mama Kong Kong. Bye bye. In fact, she started her search even before Karis turned two. Yeah, you will say that it's typical parents' worries that, uh, well, uh, which school you go about, and she's only one and a half years old. But then we think that a good education is start from the school, so that's why we did our early research, all the things. I'm going to school. Carice attends the Eaton House Preschool, one of the most expensive in town. The school fee is about 1,300 uh, per month. Slightly below 20,000 a year for just the school fees alone. That's almost 10 times what parents would pay at a neighbourhood preschool. Looking at the school fees, of course, is very scary. But then, because both of us are working parents, we might not have that sufficient time to nurture her throughout in her education. So we very depends on school to provide that kind of service to her. <laughs> After all, uh, my only child, my only daughter, and you want the best for her, so definitely it will just bite the bullet and go. <laughs> See how she sings the song? The international curriculum offered by the preschool makes it a popular choice among expatriates. And Carissa's parents feel the exposure will give her an edge over others when she enters a local primary school. I think partly because Eaton House actually tried to cater for these uh, international students, so everybody has to speak proper English rather than uh, localised English. I think she, she speaks better than um, basically her mum. <laughs> so we feel that, hmm, we choose the right preschool. <laughs> Despite the cost, more Singaporean couples are looking to upmarket preschools for their kids. Over the years, we have seen increase of Singaporean children from 25% to more than 50%. Yeah, I think as Singapore progresses, parents see the value in investing in a good early child education. Like a Chinese has proverb, San Sui Jian Da, Qi Sui Jian Lao. And there are still 200 hopefuls in line, many of whom have registered as early as two years ago just to get their child's name on the wait list. I think what is best is that the child's needs are being met. I think that's the most important criteria. You know, for young children, there's no one best approach. It may be cheap, it may be expensive, but find the program that meet your child's needs. Can you hang 
For Anthony Lau's mother, Rowena, the choice of preschool is dependent on only one thing. The curriculum, it must be geared towards him preparing for entry into primary school. Look up, look straight up. Come next year, Anthony will join his eight-year-old sister, Alexandra, at her primary school. And she's already helping him prepare for it. We are hoping to slowly get him used to it by bringing him to schools and following Chechia and also indoctrinating in him some ideas about what primary school is like and how you should behave in primary school. You know the school song is a very important part of a school value. Do you understand or not? Some may consider Rowena's intense attention to her children's education a tad gyasu, a Chinese dialect word for someone who's afraid to lose out. Mm. No, I don't consider myself a kiasu parent because a kiasu parent just merely means that you are afraid to lose. What I'm doing for him is to actually prepare him for the future to be able to look forward. Anthony's preschool, PCF Kindergarten, is run by the charitable arm of the country's ruling political party. It is Singapore's largest kindergarten operator, with close to 250 schools scattered across the island. From what I understand, PCF actually offers a curriculum very close to Primary 1. He does bring home work back every Friday and they have the spelling test, they have show and tell. So these are things that are very close to what primary school is currently learning and doing. Basically, we are a community foundation, so we are appealing to a different segment of the population. We do have a program of our own, uh, which we are very proud of, and then that we will just stand by it, and we will find that parents actually do their homework. They know which one, which centres actually give them uh, value for money as such. Good morning to you and good morning to But at five-year-old Carissa's kindergarten, the curriculum is quite different. Good morning, Carice. How are you? Fine, thank you. Hers is the only preschool endorsed by the International Baccalaureate, a European education program that is recognised worldwide. We're going to decide how we're going to share the story with the rest of the class. Carice's teacher holds a master's degree in early childhood education and the school adopts an inquiry-based approach to learning. The teacher asks many open-ended questions. We encourage the children to think, to find their own answers. And this is a very uh, powerful tool of learning. Then we need to give the story a title to... I know. Okay. Restaurant, Restaurant Customer. Carissa's parents are impressed with the transformation in their daughter after just a year here. Before she joined Ethan House, she's very reserved and she seldom talks also. After she joined Ethan House, of course we see a 360 degree change. I love you too. I love about my friends. She's now more open, more approachable. She's also more expressive. I bring dress. Now she has more confidence in herself. She's very observant and she's very quick thinker also. It's hot, that's why you will need a hair. For six-year-olds like Dingen, who start primary school next year, getting into the desired school is not something money can buy. For primaries, you only get pretty much is one chance. The primary registration, you're in, then you're in. 
As the nationwide primary school registration draws near, Dingan's parents make preparations. Despite having come from Taiwan, Helen is now well acquainted with school admissions Singapore style, the result of intense research that began when Dingan was only four. Singaporean parents are very hardworking. Very hardworking, yes. Without any past affiliation to Nanyang Primary, Helen had little choice but to try an alternative route. I have to be a volunteer in order to get my foot in. Her strategy may get Dingen bumped up a couple of spots during registration, but it isn't a sure thing. During registration, we move from face to face. Okay, we will complete the phase one, then we move into phase two. For the school, we do not have a control in the number of uh, vacancies that's going to be available in any phase because uh, we cannot anticipate how many siblings are coming in in phase one. Neither can we anticipate uh, how many ex pupils are sending their siblings or their, 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 their children back to the school. But it's a gamble parents are willing to take. Every year, the school receives close to 300 applications for the 40 parent volunteer positions. As a parent, as long as you have tried, you know, if the child can get in, we'll be more than happy. It's also another good way to know the school before um, my child is officially in. Helen's hoping the more than 80 hours she's put in here pays off. I will say yes. Uh, I will be very happy if my child can be part of Nanyang. When do you think you will go to Bangalore? Tomorrow. <laughs> in Singapore, for many kids like Anthony, the end of the school day doesn't mean the end of lessons. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So follow the music, okay? Today, the six-year-old has music class. Anthony and his friends are rehearsing for their upcoming concert. I thought it was uh, it went very well. Right, much better than his practice at home. He should do excellently. <laughs> I have faith in him, right? I perform good, 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 good. Rowena's plans for her son are to get him on the fast track, an accelerated program so he can do more in less time. I hope to finish his musical education, at least the, the basic of uh, grade 8, um, as quickly as possible before he reaches his primary 6. Uh, which is the uh, important year for his PSLE, so it doesn't affect him in terms of his academic. G. Being preschoolers, they have such strong and powerful memory, so you might as well start them earlier so they can absorb much better and retain that information that builds that very core foundation. Other parents are following suit. Music schools here are seeing increased enrollment for preschool programs, some taking in kids as young as two. It is this very great fear that parents believe that their child will lose out if they don't start them learning something as young as possible. What has the answer for number six? And, 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 very good, Arush. Two clowns, so what do you use? Oh. Very good. I'm going to learn anything. Very I'm going to learn anything. Good. But Singaporean parents are not only fending off competition from local kids. In this largely immigrant society, a constant influx of new citizens is turning on the heat. I'm the number zero. Number one means it's the second. Zero means it's the first. I'm very good. Clever, very good. I've done everything. 